Aloha. Video number two, Aloha Locks. Dreadlock Research Resources. This isn't uh, by any means the be all end all list of what's out there. This is uh, what I've found. Um, my journey is only five months along right now, so I'm no expert, but this is what I found that worked for me so far, the go-to resources that I've been using and I wanted to share them with you guys. We basically have two main resources and that's going to be Dreadlock Forums and YouTube videos. Those are the main resources that I use. Also notable mentions, I think uh, peers, real life people, um, people that you can find that do Dreadlock maintenance in your area. Great resources. Go and have them help you do some maintenance. Uh, maybe you are comfortable doing it yourself, but it's uh, worth the money even just to go and get an hour of maintenance done by somebody who does it for a living or does it on multiple people. Maybe that's not how they make their living, but it's something to do on the side because they've garnered enough of know-how to be able to do that for people. So that's uh, another great resource. Also just people that you see on the street. You see some guy with some sick set of locks, it's maybe worth it to, uh, if you're not being bothersome to walk up and say hey man you know you never know what you can learn so you know those are notable mentions what I'll do is I'll list below in the description for the video some links to each one of the channels that I'm going to cover there's about 12 I believe there's sort of a top four the rest are ones that I do check in on and I think they're still valuable so they'll all be below here. You can click on those links. You can easily get to those. And I am going to just verbally quickly cover what you can expect from those channels. Also after that, I uh, will cover the... T there's two forums that I would recommend looking into. They're helpful, good sources, and I'll cover those second. Don't forget about uh, Google. Use a search engine. Go out there and see what you find. New stuff pops up every day. Like I said, I've only been at this for five months and maybe five months before that doing serious research. I planned ahead a good maybe year and a half that I was going to lock up my hair. So I did have time to look around and that's you know where you're going to find a lot of stuff is just on your own. Don't think you're going to get spoon fed every great resource out there but I am going to do my best to share what I found up to this point. First one I wanted to talk about is uh, Lazy Dreads. This is uh, top of the list, uh, biggest, most current YouTube source of information that I see out there right now. It's basically a must-see. Every great relevant topic that you can think of is covered, mostly objectively covered as well. He occasionally says, uh, you know, I don't really think this works, uh, but tells about the method or product and leaves it to you to find out. He personally does no real maintenance techniques. Uh, but he does cut his dreads every year. He's had his dreads for about six and a half years now. So, wow, I mean, that's up there. I, I don't know that I have anybody off the top of my head that I've ran across in resources that uh, has uh, that wealth of knowledge. Just that amount of time, you can't help but learn so much about dreadlocks. The videos start off around five years, so no real video documentation here of the formative beginnings of uh, his dreadlocks. But he does have a video of still picture shots um, from the beginning, uh, the starting of the process up to the five year point where his videos take off from. Uh, he still has his dreads and constant updates happening weekly or even multiple times in a week. So that's a great resource. That's number one must see lazy dreads. Next on my list, Collins Dreads 777. This is another top resource for me. Good topics are covered by Colin on his channel. Uh, this channel is especially valuable to me personally because we have similar hair. He started his hair at a similar length to what mine was when I started and we have similar ideas of how we want to maintain our dreads. The techniques that I want to use seem to be the ones that he uses so I follow him specifically because uh, it applies to me directly. This uh, specific personal interest that I have in his channel brings up uh, a great insight to consider uh, with these videos and your own research in these videos. And that is that it's good to find yourself uh, a mentor in some way. You don't have to have a personal relationship with someone to use them as a template for what you do. You can easily find someone who's starting with a similar hair length or using a specific method of practice and maintenance or lack thereof 
and that would be a good resource for you personally to follow, finding someone with similar hair type and using similar maintenance techniques can uh, show you what you could expect from your hair and that could be really useful. So Colin starts out with a backcomb technique to his dreads and uh, crochet maintenance in the beginning that tapers off and basically ends and um, just continues to pull in loose hair. He's had his dreads for about two and a half years. Uh, the videos start off around eight months, so no video documentation here of the early formative beginnings of his dreadlocks, but he does document um, from eight months to two and a half years, and uh, you see some amazing changes in his dreadlocks in that time. Colin still has his dreads. Uh, content updates have uh, slowed down, but uh, monthly updates are still coming in. So that's that channel. Next channel on the list is so number three. Still um, in my top resources, basically on par with, with Colin is uh, Baggy Boy. He also has an awesome journey on his channel. His uh, channel actually begins at the very beginning. Uh, most notable is that in the beginning his hair is completely bleached out. Uh, his sections are right down the middle and that initially has some discouraging results for him. And you can watch the transformation, what happens from those early beginnings on to, uh, let's see where he's at now, is three years. So there's a lot to see and in the end they look sick. He has big, thick dreads. And um, his first video is actually the day of backcombing. So the whole journey is there. It's a great resource. I highly recommend that one. And I just generally like the guy. I like his humor and I, I like watching his videos. Content updates have slowed down, but he's still trying to do the monthly updates. Definitely check that one out. Uh, next on the list, I have uh, Ryan O'Reilly. This is another top resource for me just because there's a lot of content there. Another great transformation viewable in his videos. Most notable with him, in the beginning he has some problems with wax and just the general backcombing. At one point in the very beginning, I can't recall if it's that he pulls all the dreads out and re-backcombs or just re-backcombs what's there. But there is, uh, you know, some troubleshooting in the beginning, so that's interesting. It's it's unique to his journey. He had his dreads for around two years. Videos start off the actual day of that coming, so that's always great to see it from the very beginning. Content on his page basically stopped because he cut his dreads off. However, recently he started doing a uh, lost tapes additions to his channel. There's some um, content that apparently was lost on the computer or he didn't feel like uploading at the time and now it's trickling in. Next on the list is um, Not Locks. Most specifically this is a great resource because it covers a different method to locking your hair. It's, the title of the channel is called Not Locks and that's because the method used is interlocking. That is a technique where new growth on your dread box, you take the body of the dread and twist it through the base and pull it out forming these twisting interlocks. Although this is the way that he does his locks and he often talks about it and explains how it works, he also has guest appearances from other people. He approaches strangers on the street that he interviews and they uh, have different ways that they've started their dreadlocks. So there's all different types of methods that are not only seen, but that are covered. He talks about backcombing, and uh, really should just go to the channel and check it out and see all the topics that are covered. He's had his dreads for four and a half years. That's notable. Uh, videos start around two years. So not too much of a journey to see, per se. You can see him get longer, obviously but you don't get to see too much of a transformation there. There's just a lot of content to look at. Still has his dreads. Content updates are very constant, uh, but all over the place as far as content. So it's not specifically something that's always going to be dread specific. Next on the list, Sylvia Bill. Uh, she had some sick blonde, platinum colored dreads, very thin, I think she had near a hundred of them. So a very unique journey and channel to watch just because they're very specific to her and not a lot of people have dreadlocks like that. Um, 
she had her dreads for about two years. Videos start off around one and a half years, so again on this channel there's not too much of a transformation to see, but she does cover a lot of useful topics and uh, there's some how to start dread videos on there that I'm remembering. Um, um, just another notable channel to check out. Videos on that channel are still coming up but no longer dread related. Next on the list, Azorzilla. Good basic topics covered on this channel. This girl in specific is just hilarious. I like her style, I like the presentation, good humor, great change of pace if you're watching a lot of stuff that's very dry and this is how you do this method and blah blah blah. Not only is it funny stuff that uh, the way that she presents it, but there's some really intelligent insights in uh, the specifics that she covers in her videos. I found that to be very helpful. So this is a notable channel. You know, check this one out. She's had her dreads for three years. Video starts off around six months and continues on through the process. She still has her dreads, but content um, has basically stopped. Next on the list, Ned the Dread. Uh, this guy covers some basic topics. Not a whole lot of content, but a great journey to watch happen here. And some topic, some uh, important topics are covered, showing a great transformation here. The dreads just you know look a little shoddy in the beginning, but by the end, uh, a lot happens. So this is a great channel. He uh, unfortunately cut his dreads, so content updates are now not dread related. I did see one mention of him possibly growing his hair back and starting the process again, so uh, I guess stay tuned for that. Can't be sure what's going to happen there. next. On to pumps. This guy's had dreads twice. Um, video for him picks up on his second set of dreads and uh, follows that set. So he had them once. That wasn't documented, and then the second time through, he started a YouTube channel. They uh, start out around uh, two months old, is when the videos start, and goes up to almost four years. Content for this channel has basically stopped. Next, um, Keeping Wheat. This guy uh, has a unique set of dreads uh, he back home, but uh, then let go to neglect with virtually no maintenance. So uh, there's a full journey to see there. He's had dreads for about three and a half years now. And uh, the content updates are slower, but still happening. And last on the list, but by no means last in importance, the, I think I left it to the end because I don't even know how to say this one. It's Poilis, Poilis, P-O-E-Y-L-I-S. It's below. Look at the link. A thicky old set of dreads on this guy. Um, a good full journey and transformation to be seen, backcombed uh, to start and then little to no maintenance for him. Uh, so he's had his dreads for about uh, three years. Videos start around six months, so there's a full journey to see there, and by the end they just look sick. It's very unique how thick his dreads are, and he just has his own character. So I like this guy's channel because there's not too many people out there that have dreads that look like his to me. Uh, this is another channel where uh, updates have uh, slowed down, but still coming in, so still still kicking. Dreadlock forums. So I have two websites on this list. These are just public forums. Uh, these are basically the two most popular ones that I found. There might be others out there. Like I said, they're popping up every day, and I don't make it my business to be an expert on this stuff, but this is what I found. These two sites are. Dreadlocktruth.com. So, Dreadlocktruth.com is a good active forum to prowl around in. Uh, most useful for me for uh, the Dreadlock Timeline forum, which has tons of great picture heavy documented transformations of people and their dread journey. So, there's lots of other nooks and crannies to explore within this forum. Tons of different places to look that, frankly, I didn't get into. I got basically stuck on these uh, dread timelines. Uh, next on the list is dreadlockssite.com. Um, this site is rather infamous for its hard line on uh, neglect and freeform style dread process. Uh, it's, it also has this rather eccentric uh, leader and creator of the site, Soaring Eagle. 
and uh, I'll leave it at uh, saying this is a worthy resource to investigate to uh, see what ideas are presented on the forum. They're very specific to one school of thought, and um, it's useful to explore that one school of thought, see if it applies to you or if you agree with it. I will also say there's uh, valuable bits of information to be found here for uh, natural products, natural remedies, and natural approaches to care and maintenance. So definitely look into that. That's available there. Woo! That's going to conclude my list of uh, valuable research resources for Dreadbox. There's many more. Uh, please comment and suggest to me other ones uh, that I should check out or be aware of that I'm not aware of. Uh, I could do a follow-up video in the future to this that could discuss those. I'm waiting until next month to kind of cover my own here because at that point it'll be six months and that's sort of a milestone. I consider uh, the first milestones in the Dread Journey to you know, be one week, one month, six months, a year, and then, you know, two years, three years. Starts going in years after the first one, I figure. Next uh, month, I will put an update in and talk more specifically about me and my journey. Some more detailed pictures of my hair, some close ups, some turnarounds, the typical dance. And um, until then, I'm going to have to think about what else I'd like to cover. Send me some ideas, some new topics, and uh, I'll consider those. I definitely want to make some more videos, and I'm definitely going to keep posting them up here. Share these with your friends, and be vocal about things you'd want to hear about. Until next time, aloha for now.